Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're here at HP Discover Day 2. We're at the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas. This is the Cube, where we extract the signal from the noise. We bring you the best guests at these events and share with you their knowledge. Uh, I'm at D Vellante. If you want to tweet me questions, please do so. Two, two folks from All Digital are here. Uh, they do broadcasting to mobile devices. We're going to get into that and talk about that uh, uh, quite a bit. Steve Smith is the Vice President of Network Services. And to my immediate left is Tim Napoleon, who's the Chief Strategist at All Digital. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on theCUBE and welcome. Thanks, thanks for, for having inviting us. us. Yeah, so we were just talking about, uh, this is your first HP Discover, but you've been an HP customer for quite some time. But let's start with, uh, with all digital, uh, guys based in Southern California, the, where all the action is in media. But uh, tell us a little bit about the company. Uh, who wants to take that? Yeah, so the problem we just tried to solve in the marketplace is we, we see there's a huge opportunity to help bring broadcast solutions to virtually anyone. So that could be a brand, that could be an enterprise company, could be an individual personality. And so what they want to be able to do is take live and on-demand content, ingest that into the cloud, and get that out on their favorite devices, whether that's a mobile device, a tablet, desktop, or even connected televisions. There's use cases across all those different verticals to really get their content services across this ever-expanding universe of devices. And why they want to do that is because the audience, where people's attentions are turning to, are on these devices. So you see the viewership, the a, a video, and other types of services on devices going way up. Well, it's interesting. We were, John Furrier and I, my partner, we were talking the other day about the whole Nielsen ratings, you know, and how you know, uh, organizations have been canceling, you know, the broadcasters have been canceling certain shows, and then they're realizing, wow, we're kind of using an outdated metric here. We're not counting, you know, I don't know what the Nielsen measures, maybe a couple hundred thousand, maybe not even, maybe it's a couple thousand households. And here we are with, you know, mobile and iPads and everybody watching content online. So it must be a huge boost uh, to your business, you know, all this action. Absolutely. We, you think about the term broadcast you use with Nielsen, and that used to just measure a few key broadcasters. Yeah. You know, it, at one point it's probably a handful, now yeah. it's you know, maybe a few hundred. Um, but with our software and cloud, what we're trying to enable is almost virtually anyone to be a broadcaster. So we have people that are literally on their iPhones creating their own broadcast going into the cloud and out to the different devices and audiences. Or we have much more sophisticated traditional broadcasters that are getting things like live local news out to a new audience and all these different devices. So how's the service work? Um, talk about the sort of how I engage with All Digital. So it's, very, it's very simple in the sense that we have a product called All Digital Cloud. It's a cloud-based solution. Um, you simply sign up with that and then we give you a set of instructions on how to originate content into the system. And then we can go through a discovery process where we help you say what devices you want to be on, uh, maybe what you want to have apps that work on those devices, how you want those to look. And uh, our professional services team and integration services team can figure those experiences for you. And then people can find your app in the Apple App Store, or on the Android Play Store, or on your favorite smart television uh, platform. So, so the app, uh, the content is embedded within an app? It can be embedded right. in an app or it can be available in an HTML5 type mobile web or desktop browser. And the value that you guys bring is turnkeying that experience um, and, and there's additional promotion involved, or not necessarily, it's up to me to promote, correct? Uh, yeah, we, we're not the, uh, you know, the, the marketing arm for your company, we're more of the, the technical. The execution, uh, the, right? The execution of it, but really what's great from a marketer's point of view is you're now able to get to lots of different devices, so maybe you don't have to just serve an audience on one specific platform, you can take your broadcast message and go as wide as possible. Okay, so you're like uh, a better YouTube? Is that, is that fair? Or? I would say that there's, you know, YouTube is a phenomenal company and, and they give you a lot of ability to show videos online. What we find is a lot of our companies want a lot of control. They want to have control about what content, maybe what business models. Uh, they want control about what how their brand is presented and what venues. And so we, we would be more appropriate for people that want to have control of their broadcast experience. Mm -hmm. And, and keep it to the audiences that they find appropriate. Okay, and, and they might want to control the revenue flow too. So, uh, and they might want to have all the revenue go directly to them, that's another great point. <laughs> all, right. all right, so Steve, talk about the network uh, requirements, that's obviously your area of expertise. How uh, are they evolving? What's changing you know, as a result of all this video explosion and mobile explosion? How does that put increased pressure on what you have to do? Yeah, certainly, we, uh, we needed a way to solve the to take large file sets, both the object size themselves, might be a, a large broadcast quality mezzanine asset, it might be a small mobile asset, it might be text files, it might be images, uh, and give that 
present that in the cloud. So an example workflow that we uh, that we see is we have uh, a customer that uh, has a mobile broadcast application. So anybody can download this app out of the iTunes store, put it on their phone, and become a broadcaster. They do a short three minute clip. We will broadcast that live. At the conclusion of that broadcast, we take that asset, we store it onto StoreAll, and then we transcode it into a couple of different derivative formats and then present that for delivery out on the internet on demand. So they do live events with that. They also do just individual one-to-one, -one, but that's uh, that's an example workflow. So the, the file system, we needed something that could scale both in terms of size to be able to support a very large and complex namespace, but also so that we could uh, support the scalability, in other words, the performance of both ingesting those objects and delivering those objects without having to make copies of them and move them into different areas for delivery. So, so we should talk. <laughs> so, we're doing, hey, here we are, we're on theCUBE. You getting this, Mark? We're doing, <laughs> we're doing live broadcasts, right? You, exactly. you're, so, so how would we engage? Let's say, so we, we're doing theCUBE, we're doing this live videos, you see this you know, little mobile studio that we have here. You know, we're pumping out content like crazy. Um, I guess it, you know, you can kind of watch it on your mobile. It's not necessarily the greatest experience. I mean, it kind of depends, but so, so what would we get from working with you guys? Yeah, so we have a product, it's called the All Digital Cloud. Uh, you, you can log into that product uh, and you can set up a set of workflows and business rules. And then that'll create um, a, a player object that you can then develop into your app framework or we can do that for you. And essentially the end user experience might be that you would have a, uh, an, an, a, let's say an iPad app. That iPad app can feature a live button when you're broadcasting live. You, can, you know, your favorite on-demand clips. Uh, maybe you want to have some of the clips with uh, your key, key partners be subscription. Maybe some of the clips you want to have advertising models. Uh, so you set up those business rules and those business tools. We can figure that all for you. And then the finished product is a very nice, engaging app that you control. Additionally, maybe you want to have some RSS feeds. Maybe you want to have your Twitter and social integrated. Maybe you want to want the audience to be able to share clips from that app out to their friends that are on Facebook and other social media sites. So the experience from your point of view is it's a very turnkey service. Uh, and then once it's done, you now have the ability from you know, a show like this to upload live or on-demand clips right into the system. And within a few minutes, or live, if it's a live stream, publishes out to all of your audience on these various apps. Okay, so I would be, of course, responsible for the equipment that allows me to live stream on the web to your platform. Correct. Right, so you, we, we'd connect into that, you would ingest that content, and then, uh, depending on how we set things up, what the policies are, the content would be rendered uh, in, the, in, in the solution that you know, we choose. Absolutely, and then the nice thing is, your business rules, your content workflows, you're not having to replicate that for every device that you want to go to. Right. By, by using all digital, we provide a unified platform so you can publish to all these different connected experiences. Meaning um, different different uh, platforms, different operating systems. Yeah, different so maybe devices. you want a Roku channel, or maybe you want a, you know the new Xbox 720, maybe they need a channel. Maybe you want to have uh, mobile, maybe you want to have iPad. So the, the goal of the platform is to be able to support all these new connected devices that come out and have your broadcast experience work on each one of them. That's cool. Uh, we definitely want to. That's the guy right there. You got to talk to him, Mark, <laughs> Mark Hopkins. And uh, it sounds interesting, it. doesn't it? Um, you know, I love it. Real time biz dev on the queue. Um, My job is done here. <laughs> right. All right. So Steve, you were talking a little bit about some of the, uh, the, the requirements that you have, and you guys are a store all customer. Yes. Uh, so talk about how you use that platform. So store all is effectively the center of our cloud universe. We uh, have adopted basically a grid computing concept where we have clusters of machines that do various things in the workflow. For example, we have a group of machines that will do DRM encryption. We have other machines that will do DVR-like functions. We have other machines that will do server-side recording of live streams. We have other machines that will do transcoding. So the beauty of StoreAll is that we can scale it out in terms of performance. We can present that same namespace to a number of different machines. Either it'll look like block storage, it might look like NFS storage, but we can present that same file so I don't need to move it around to other areas to do things to it. For example, like Tim said, if you have a live event such as this, we can do a server-side recording on that, and then based on your workflow that you've designed, we can transcode that into, say, six derivative output formats supporting Android, tablet, Android device, iOS, iPad, whatever your formats that you are, we can transcode those the moment that the the broadcast is done, now we have your recording. I don't need to replicate it within my cloud to do those sort of things because we have one center storage 
So, so okay, so you've got some IP that does that, obviously. That's yes. not a trivial thing. So I don't have to make six copies and suck up a ton of storage. Right. That's very important when you're dealing, particularly with large objects like broadcast quality mezzanine. Those can be two, 15, 20 gigabits in size. It's very large. Oh yeah, we, we face that all the time. We're constantly running out of storage here. All right, so, so store all is the center of that platform. And we, we were talking off camera a little bit about object. Do you see sort of object storage as a potential you know, future direction that you guys would go? Or? From the, uh, I'll let Steve handle the, the technical term. From the business side, what we see the, the opportunity that's really exciting to us is, if you think about all these different combinations, right? So you have just, as, even a, a small broadcaster like ourselves, you know, thousands of assets coming into the platform. And then you're going to potentially, you know, uh, millions of different device combinations. It creates potentially billions of different asset types. And so being able to search, find, query, do all of those different things very quickly really gives the broadcaster a competitive advantage. Because if you start to see in the broadcast world, especially in news and breaking news, the first person to get that article or that story out on the, on the web, it's going to get the lion's share of the audience and the viewership. So all of this technology, one of the key benefits that it drives back for the business user, is it allows them to quickly create a channel, quickly search, find, and add content to those channels, and then distribute it very fast. And so you want a workflow that doesn't take weeks or days or hours, you want a workflow that's as near to real time as possible, even as your asset uh, databases grow to billions and billions of objects. But do you, so, so we, I used the YouTube example before, I, I know it well, because that's what we use. Um, but the real value that you bring is control over that experience. Uh, but unless I'm missing something, is there is there some inherent, you know, s uh, a speed factor? It's because of your workflow system, I guess, right? Absolutely. Let's talk about that a little bit because I don't, I don't fully understand what that's all about relative. And we designed our own workflow. I guess is, is the answer there. Yeah. We, got, we have a homegrown workflow. So yeah. Uh, so you really, you know, the second that your video is published. Um, you know, how quickly is that available on, as an on-demand asset on all these different devices out there in your universe? And we think that making that a very fast, efficient process is, is important. Yeah, so for us it's minutes, you know, yeah. which is pretty good. Yes. Right? But uh, and it wasn't always minutes. <laughs> it used to be days or hours, you know. It took some, some effort to do that. Um, but okay, so but but you got that right out of the box. That's, so that comes for that somebody comes that didn't platform. sweat for two years trying to figure that out. You, I get that immediately, okay. We're making it sense. easy for you. Yeah, right. All right, good. Um, all right, talk about your, uh, a little bit more about your relationship with uh, with HP. You guys have been a customer of theirs for a long time, or is the store all kind of a new deal, or? Yeah, we have uh, we were involved with a group called Ibrix. Yeah, okay. When that product launched, yeah. in fact, we, uh, we really helped them kind of bake that product in yep. uh, at our previous company, and uh, company was acquired by HP, still maintained a relationship with a lot of the Ibrix team that then became part of the Storall team and continue that today. Uh, we help HP test their new Storall software versions uh, in, in addition to running Storall in our production environment. What about analytics? So you got all this metadata you know, floating around out there around, you know, particularly in video, when it was done, you know, maybe some other attributes of, 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 of metadata. Do you see analytics playing a role in you know, either today or in the future in terms of adding value to your customers? Absolutely. Uh, in the broadcast world, if, if you don't measure it, it didn't happen. It's kind of the tree that fell in the woods, right? If right. You, didn't, you didn't get and record that. You, know, you can't sell it to advertisers. You can't record it for royalties. So having a very robust platform that not only can broadcast messages out, but also receive all that audience data back. And so Storall is a great platform from that perspective that um, you have the disk speed and the disk I.O. to not only both be a broadcaster on the outbound, but take all of that data that comes back from those different apps back into the platform. So whether that data is people uploading videos or that's uh, you know ad beacons or that's different types of analytic markers that you want to track, all of that comes back from the audience back into the system. And then it can be uh, leveraged with your favorite you know reporting tools, whether that's an, something like an Omniture or a Google Analytics or any of the HP products that do uh, big data analysis. Okay, so you'll feed, for instance, everybody uses Google Analytics, right, or Omniture is another one, but so you'll feed those systems, um, and, and then I get my dashboards, and okay, so that's that's cool. Now, what you were saying before, so you don't have a live platform, right? I, I pick my own live platform and then bring it to you, or do you actually We have actually a, have a live platform, so you, you push a live stream into us from your favorite encoding product. Okay. And then we, we take it from there. So, 
Talk about that a little bit. Uh, that's another part that I'm very interested in. So what's, what differentiates you from you know, other guys out there, you know, Justin TV, live stream, YouTube's now got its own live platform if you meet criteria. Again, it's a unified workflow that you have total control over. So you, just like you would dictate with your on-demand clips, who gets to yeah. see it, what's your business model, what's your economics around it, what's your brand around it. With live, it's the same thing. You can quickly create a live linear channel uh, and send it out. We've added some additional features that are very popular. So one is uh, insertion. So let's say that you're a, a bank branch and uh, your bank branch is a primary area that, that it's maybe Spanish is the primary language. And so maybe you don't want your commercials being in English, you want Spanish language commercials in your ad breaks. And so you can set up business rules and policy there to do uh, overlays of uh, injected content even in a live stream. So there's a lot of really kind of broadcast centric features that you get as part of the platform. And I can obviously make it as open or closed as I want. It's Absolutely, total control. All right, Steve, so I want to give you the last word here on uh, stuff you want to see from the, the technology community, things they could do to, to make your, your life better and then you know, drive more business ultimately. Sure. Right now we're seeing more demand for uh, cloud services in other geographic regions. We, uh, we sort of view ourselves as a Switzerland, if you will, of, of, uh, as an origin. Our customers can bring their own CDN or whatever distribution model they want to deliver their content to their ed the edge and end users. But we are seeing demand for more origin uh, setups in, say, Europe, Asia, uh, South America. I think we'd like to see uh, better distribution technology within the store all products so that our clients simply need to uh, send us their content once. And then we have a secure methodology that you know, basically we don't need to build ourselves, but that we can just leverage store all to, to send that object or that file or whatever it is that's been ingested to a remote point quickly in real time. I think that's that's something that we're looking forward to and talking talking more with the uh, HP team on. Excellent, all right. So, uh, Steve and Tim, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate the story and uh, hopefully we can have a little discussion afterwards. <laughs> all right, keep it right there, everybody. This is theCUBE, I'm Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest live from HP Discover.